Kurt Stone. It is your 500th podcast of Geeking on Walt Disney World, and I am so excited to be able to congratulate you on that. Unfortunately, I can't be at Walt Disney World to do that, but what better place than here at the Voice of America in our nation's capital? Kurt, you are the podfather. You are the voice of the geeks, and we congratulate you on 500 and wish you many more. so much carl for that introduction and i really thank you so much for sending me some pins carl's a great pin trader he picked up a couple of my favorite character baloo these are awesome ones ones with the jungle book and ones with baloo and mowgli which is one of my favorite depictions of the jungle book and that's an intro from about a year ago, because i'm up to episode 571 hey disney world geeks curtis stone here i'm the Podfather host of this amazing Geekin family. Welcome to the Geekin on Walt Disney World podcast. In this week's episode, it's the second part of Natalie O'Malley's enchanting honeymoon adventure at Disney World. And I've been having fun hanging out and talking with friends like Natalie, reviewing Disney parks and Disney World tips and hacks for over 10 years. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. I started the podcast with my daughter, Lindsay, talking about our Disney World trips. And now we bring on our Disney geeks to tell their trip stories and our Listeners are so positive, caring, generous, and they are experienced Disney geeks. You'll get lots of ideas and tips for your next trip to Disney World from their real-world experiences and trip reports. And we encourage a family atmosphere here on the show. We'd love for you, too, to join our geekin' family. A great way to do that is to check out our amazing private discussion group in Facebook. Search for Geekin' on WDW Family. You can ask questions, share your trip pictures, and have fun with one of the best group of Disney World geeks on the internet. We are independent Disney authorized travel guides with FTC Elite Travel, and we'd love to be your Disney travel guides, help you book your room tickets, dining reservations, answer questions for you. You notice many of our guests on the podcast book their trips or they transfer those trip bookings that they book themselves to the Traveling Tierras. That's my wife, Margita, her good friend, Judy. And you can get started by emailing them at travelingtierras at gmail.com. Don't worry about writing it down. Just do a little search on that app that you listen to the show. You'll see our show notes and their email as well as mine is there. You can reach out to us to talk about your next adventures to Disney World like Natalie O'Malley. And if you were listening last week, you heard part one of her mini moon. And if you enjoyed that and you were kind of a little cliffhanger, what's going to come up next? Let me tell you, you got breakfast at Topolino's, the Smellifants on Parade in Magic Kingdom, Patrick's favorite rides. Remember, they did rankings, and you're going to find one that was uh, 9 and 9.5, and it's an interesting choice of an attraction for that rating. They buy Family Crests in Epcot, do the World Showcase rankings. You're going to hear Pat's Tower of Terror experience. <laughs> Solo fun around World Showcase and Fantasmic for Natalie. The Soren surprise for Pat and Pat and Natalie's favorite memories from this trip. And I really enjoyed how Natalie and Patrick ranked their attractions, restaurants, and experiences at the end of their trip. What a great review to do when you want to know what everyone felt about the trip and see what you could do for your next trip. Now let's continue on Natalie's mini moon to Disney World. <music> doing awesome you're training him well yep i'm gonna do one more which is breakfast at topolino's yes this was the one thing that i started with my original plan that didn't change because <laughs> our flights out that saturday were around like 2 p.m so i wasn't going to do a park day i anyway i did have to almost be restrained to not hop on the skyliner and go to epcot without him i it was he's you're not going to do it right i'm like i could just go to hollywood studios for a little bit and i could go see the muppets and leave and he's like, are you really uh i i didn't i didn't anyway but we knew we weren't going to do park day so topolino's that was 
something. Okay. So I disclosed to him that it was character dining because some of them he had mixed because they were character dining. Storybook dining at Artist Point being one of them. That was, I think, the only other one I had suggested, to be honest, because I still haven't found somebody who wants to go to that one with me either. Oh, my, my wife would go with you. She loves that place. And it's the dopey of it all, man. So that's why I'm thinking, we're thinking, uh, I, I, I have found someone in Samantha and Heidi because we're all doing dopey. So we're really good. <laughs> dopey will be there probably, right? Oh, yeah. My guy. Oh, that's awesome. I, so there was he against character dining then? I think it was more of the, listen, I'm a adult grown man <laughs> and i i don't know if i need to do character dining and get a hug from mickey mouse but so he knew topolino's was but he picked it for the menu oh okay sure he knew i did not just i did not hide that from him because he was oh like he because i took somebody else there like for one there was like are you really want to do this for character breakfast like, really but then after the dinner the breakfast he was like oh yeah no i get it now yeah i would definitely always go back there because it's one of those where, for the most part, your character dining is a vehicle to not have to wait in line in the parks for your characters. And you pay a little bit of a premium for that. Here, I just like the food, too. Yeah, I see that. For sure. It's a great spot, too, right? At the Riviera. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, it was beautiful there. Pat really liked that, too. But he got the sour cream waffle for his breakfast. I got the steak and eggs. I diverted from the quiche. It was a good decision. But I, I kept going back. I, I, a couple of times I went back to the quiche. I'm like, no, I, I need to not. You can still get a side. It's not necessarily a side that's a miniature entree the way it used to be, where you can just get a sour cream waffle on the side. You can get sausage on the side. You can get some like eggs on the side. Uh, but for me, that was enough really to just wet the whistle of getting this the waffle. Uh, but I really wanted the steak and eggs and they were excellent. We got through the food. We did. <laughs> I, I love your choices, Natalie. Well done. Thank you. Curated. <laughs> All right. Let's go back to some of the fun stuff you did. Can you think of through this trip, what were some of the highlights of your favorite using your rankings? Anything? <laughs> when we were going through the food, I saw smell of it. I got to go get back to that. Thank you for what in the world is smell of it on parade. So it's, it's really cute. It's a free activity that you can do in uh, the Magic Kingdom and Storybook Circus. It had opened, I think, maybe a week or so, maybe a couple weeks prior. And there are these different elephants. And, uh, and they all are dressed and smell like a different thing, like corn dog, cotton candy, popcorn. No, no more spoilers from there. You go to the cast member, you get like a sticker book, and it functions similarly to the ones around during the festival, like where you have to find all the Remy's for food and wine. But it's free. They give you the stickers, and then you line up which one on the map is which, who's cotton candy, and who is churro. Oh, spoiler. And then you go back, and then you get a special prize, which is a sticker from the cast member when you give them back the map. That is super. It's the first time I heard this, so it's brand new. Yeah, it's super cute. It was definitely a way to just, uh, more time than I've spent in Storybook Circus in a long time, I think. And they're, it's cute. It's not really hard to find them. They're pretty big elephants, probably about the size of the 50th statues and not talking Tinkerbell or Abu. I'm talking like oh. Olaf, how he's a big boy. Um, <laughs> this is a Magic Kingdom? Yeah, it's a Magic Kingdom. Only in Storybook Circus area? Yeah, so it's consolidated. You can probably, like, you could probably spin between two elephants. They're that close together. I wouldn't recommend that. That's not nice. But it's not, it's not scratch and sniff. Just No, just sniff. I thought the sticker should be scratch and sniff, like the reward sticker, but it wasn't. How close do you got to get up to them to smell them? Some of them are more prominent than others. Okay. Some of them, I was like, I don't smell hot dog. <laughs> or I don't smell corn dog. But you are obviously have mustard on your tummy. That's fun. I love that. All right. It was, it, was a fun, it was a fun little activity to do. Let's see. Another big ride highlight. Oh, would definitely be we had a fantastic safari when we were in Animal Kingdom. It was Rope Drop Safari, which I had always heard to do, but never got myself out of bed fast enough to do. It's the whole running thing, I think. And first, like, you go through the first little Aturi forest, and there's like, I'm like, everyone's eating. So I'm like, okay, it's okay. But the hippos were being like fed in front of us. So they were like catching their lettuce in their mouths as we're driving past. Like, this is great. 
the animals were super active. The lion, the male lion was like perched up awake, first of all, and looking around at us, like his rock. I was losing it because that's, you know, usually if we can even see him, he's comatose, which relatable. He's an animatronic. Yeah, honestly. Um, usually you see the, the the lady lions at best, the lionesses, but I was losing it. I'm pat, like you can't even understand how rare this is, even that to see him awake. Yeah. Just hear him roar. That would be like the oh. ultimate. I've seen a bit, somebody else's video of that. It was fantastic. Yeah. We really just had a fantastic Animal Kingdom day because, so he went in. So keep in mind, he hadn't been since 2006. Everest wasn't open when he last went. Okay. Everest wasn't open. So he had a less favorable opinion of the Animal Kingdom, to say the least. Going into it. Three steps into the park, he's like, this is the best theming of anything I've ever seen. What it, like, this is awesome. Here we go. Buddy. Oh, Everest part? Yeah. There's, no, just Animal Kingdom in general. Oh, okay. Right. Everything about Animal Kingdom. Because he didn't actually go on Everest. Uh, we learned taking him on Big Thunder Mountain, that was a little like the top threshold of his uh, coaster tolerance. Uh, so he, we didn't take him on anything more intense after that, which made me glad I didn't end up buying the after hours. Cause I was like, oh, we can just pound all the rides, do guardians a bunch of times <laughs> that might've been wasted on him a little bit more. But I see he, he ranked flight of passage an 8.5. That's intense for me. I don't yes. know. Yes. He, I, he, he, I think knew to, I, cause like I leaned over to him and I was like, if there's anything intense, just close your eyes for a couple seconds. And I think he had done enough research to know that there were roles in there. There are some other things he didn't research though. We'll get to that. And so he really, I mean, he really, he was like that Oh, at the time, at that point of the trip where we had been through Magic Kingdom and we're in Animal Kingdom. He's like, that is the coolest thing I've done. That is the best ride I've done so far. Yeah. He loved, he really liked Flight of Passage. He was like, I understand why people still wait so long for this ride. We lightning laned it, but why? <laughs> He went, we did because I knew that was that was the key to his heart was to like just lightning weight it, but he was super impressed. Um, because like, of your ratings, I gotta know then what was his. What do you think his top rides were based on your ratings? Besides ooh. that one, that's a good one. Okay, so I'm I'm not looking at it right now, but just based on the feedback that I got, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. No kidding. He loved it. You know what? Secretly, I love that ride too. I'm not thinking, see, I hear people, I don't know. I don't hear enthusiasm for it. And I don't know if it's part that they're still upset of what it replaced. Cause I, I'm not that person. I, I move on with my life. I miss the great movie ride, right? Yeah. I, I do miss it, but I remember back in 2017, I'm like, it, it's time to go in a way, like it's kind of time to go. Like, it it yeah. needed such a big overhaul that like, would I love a version of it to like elsewhere to bring it back, but like plus stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely. But it was time, but he loved the great movie ride. Loved it. The Mickey's and, mini, you mean mini, the Mickey's mini. Oh, oh. sorry. I was gonna yeah. say, he got a oh. special viewing of the great movie ride. Yeah. He did do that when he was a kid, but he, yeah, that's what I meant. Mickey, he's run away railway. Uh -huh. Oopsie. Uh, that. Yeah, he really, he really enjoyed it. He laughed out loud at the Muppets the entirety of the time. We went from Star Tours to the Muppets. That's how we spent our, we didn't even really get there for much of early entry. We just. I love this ranking. Natalie 10, Pat 9 on the Muppets. <laughs> he was laughing out loud. I'm like, I'm so glad that you like this. This is good. Obviously, Statler and Waldorf were his favorites because he just, every time they talked, he laughed. That's a really good sign if you're, if, if, if the Muppets come in number nine. Exactly. Where he was like, he's, I'm going to start using that joke where we entered a contest. We lost. <laughs> I was cracking up. Really, we made a really good day at the Hollywood studios, to say the least. Yeah, some really great rankings. I see. I don't want to steal what you're going to say, but Star Tours, because he likes this. What do you think of Galaxy's Edge then? He really liked Galaxy's Edge. I think he had been clouded by some of the not so favorable things about it, where I think that did impact his opinion, where he was like, whoa, the Millennium Falcon. That's so cool. I was a little bummed because we bought Genie that day too, and uh, we were engineers having used our lightning lane. 
And that was a little sad because I, I, I was like, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say anything, right? So like, I was, I really wanted to do the pod to at least, or at least be gutters. But I was like, we could have done this in single rider. It was what it was. He thought it was actually, he was like, I actually enjoyed that. All you had to do was tap a couple buttons oh, sporadically. He's like, because I could enjoy what was going on. He's like, I think if I had to like focus on piloting, I might've been a little distracted. I was like, yeah, but also when you make the jump to light speed, that's so cool. <laughs> Do you think, knowing him now, if you go back, I've heard this more than once, that Savi's doing the lightsaber is like the best thing to do at Disney World and for adults. I haven't done it yet. I want to. I think that would blow his mind, though. Oh, yeah. I really want to. My ideal situation, though, would be somebody is like, hey, I really want a lightsaber. Can you go do it for me? And I was like, it's nice. I mostly want the experience. Yeah, of that's it. it. That's what I'm talking about. But what holds me back is what am I going to do with it? Yes, I can play with it, but I can only play with it so much. That's what holds me back is the of the transporting. Well, I'd have to transport it home in this hypothetical. But on my, yeah, on my, on my wall, that's what holds me back because I really want the experience of doing Sabi's. I just, I want somebody to be like, Hey, I really want one of these suckers and I can't get there. And I'll be like, Oh, let me free my calendar. I can do that for you. There you go. We've, we're looking for volunteers. Yes. Out well, to Natalie. Happily spend an hour, two hours of my time with like prep, whatever, doing that. And I will treat it with the utmost care. I haven't done it. I, I've got to do that. I think I would enjoy that too. I've just heard just great. Again, some people will say that's like the best experience at Disney World. Yeah. That's I a really, big hype. I shouldn't give those great expectations, but that's all I've heard. That's what I've heard. I know. I think it would be so cool. What do you think of Star Tours? Then he ranked it a nine. So he is hashtag I would or bring back the trench run. That he like, I wish that they like would do that on May the 4th or maybe like just bring back like the original just for just temporarily. Cause we did, we got Kashyyyk, which I had actually never had that before. So seeing some Wookiees, that was pretty cool. He was not the rebel spy, sad, but cause he, I was like, look as disinterested as possible. Come on, let's do this. And we then, cause then all of the scenes were going to, and I haven't seen Ahsoka yet. But it was a scene from Ahsoka with these big whale looking things. Probably just broke a couple of Star Wars fans' hearts. Sorry, Glenn. These big whale looking things is what the all the ending ones. But Ahsoka like comes in. And I think that was for a lim more limited time that they were having everybody do that. But when they introduce a new scene, everybody goes through that for their second scene. But it, he really liked it. He said it really, he, he understands because I think whichever of his parents would keep going on with him and then the other would have to tap out after one ride through. <laughs> He understood why, because we were in the back row too, which was a, even, I would say even a little jerky for me, but it was fun. Awesome. I'm going to go over to Epcot, my, one of my favorite parks for sure, and World Showcase. Now, I don't know, most kids don't really care for World Showcase, but now that he's all grown up, I'm wondering, and I'm again, I'm looking at the rankings here. What do you think were your top lands and why at Epcot? So this was one of his highly requested, I want to go walk through the World Showcase Absolutely. Pavilion. Really very excited to do that. He loved Japan. He thought that was the, he's like, it just keeps going back there. And I hadn't spent that much time going through all the different shops, right? Like I was like, oh yeah, there's Mitsukoshi where you can do the pick of pearl and there's, but like going all the way back into Japan, I hadn't really done that. And I, mean, I think I probably at some point had at least walked back there, but not really been back there. Loved that. That was probably his favorite pavilion. We, the UK pavilion, which I actually forgot that we did this. So we decided to get family crests, it being our honeymoon. But what we ended up doing is that we didn't really realize was an option. We were all set to get O'Malley and we got one with that's a double crest. So it's going to be my maiden name, Boyle and O'Malley on there. So both of our family crests, cause I'm, I originally am Irish as well. So we have that coming, I think, in a couple weeks still. I think it was going to be six weeks from honeymoons. I kind of forgot we did that. <laughs> yeah, that's been on there since I can remember going to Disney World. I remember getting that and giving that to my dad for the stone. Stone is English. And I've always, I've always researched and we talked about our heritage going back 
to the olden days of good old England. But yeah, you like that. That's cool. Yeah. We're super excited to hang it in the house and stuff. Cause what really is it exactly? It's embroidered so or what is it? We're getting like a plaque uh, with, oh gosh, now I'm trying to remember what we ordered. It's going to be a surprise for me too. <laughs> it's taking a while then. They they said six to eight weeks. Wow. Okay. This is a big deal. Yeah. And then the lady was super duper nice. She said, oh, you honeymooners. She said, I just got married last week. And, uh, she's She says that to everybody. Yeah, maybe, but she, but she did give us a bigger discount because we were nice to her. So, cause I know there are like a lot of people are like, oh, I want to take a picture of my crust. They're like, you can't do that. Cause that kind of defeats the purpose of us selling them. They don't say it like that, but it's also like the copyright and whatnot. But she definitely, she, that was a honeymoon pixie dust where she uh, gave us the DVC discount uh, instead of the annual pass holder one because we were nice to her. I'd shout her out, but I don't want her to get in trouble. So uh, if you know who you are, <laughs> we cast complimented her to make sure. But yeah, that was something that, because we were looking for something to bring back for his dad. And we ended up getting a cup or a kind of like almost a beer stein, but not from Germany, from Norway, because we liked the designs there a little bit better. Excellent. Good job. I see the Living with the Land got 9.5 from Pat and you have a nine. Why is that such highly rated? He turns to me, like, we're like just going into the first dark room in there. He's like, I unironically think this is awesome. Oh, don't worry, buddy. Don't worry, buddy. There's a lot coming. And I was like, dang, I should have done behind the scenes. I was just but, thinking the know, same thing when I saw this rating. I was like, okay, it's just another next time. Because I I have done behind the scenes before and really enjoyed it. And I'm like, shoot. And he was like, oh, there's a tour. I'm like, I can go see if there's any availability. So no, it's like to be a next time. Like. The next time, huh? Put that in the memory bank. Yeah. Behind the seeds is so fun. It's an hour of your time. And I feel like it's a, it's a great tour. Yeah. Does he like plants, planting? I like gardens. I like the, I love the gardens. Maybe that's why I like Japan too. Cause I love Japan. I always take pictures of the koi ponds and those, the water features. I'm like all about that stuff. Same thing at the living with the land. I sit there. I like snapping pictures of the water features in there. I love oh. that. I love, I just love living with the land. It's, it's, awesome. It's so, the other one country, American Adventure got a nine from Pat. He really likes the American Adventure. So he's been a history geek, self-proclaimed. So he, he, I knew taking him in that he would really like it. We caught the end of the Voices of Liberty as well before we got in. He was like, oh, it's like, is there any entertainment like this everywhere? I'm like, welcome to the Disney parks, Patrick. <laughs> welcome welcome to our world but i was like yeah but you can catch them all he's like wow they're so good and then i accidentally took a little cat nap in there i tried really hard to I, just usually when like the guys go like going down the bayou i just I take a little nap it's like when uh, in carousel of progress when uncle orville or when the fourth of july scene uncle orville's yelling from the bathtub i that's when my nap starts usually there too it's okay i try we don't admit it but we've all done it Honestly, this time on Carousel of Progress and our Magic Kingdom day, I was asleep the whole time. I think we had just started going to the first room and I just, eyes closed. I, I woke up, I woke up when they burnt the turkey for Thanksgiving or Christmas. That's how you go full stink. Yeah. You sleep in the dark attractions. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was good. It was good. One of the things that he, as a kid, actually circling back to Magic Kingdom, he had taken the chicken exit for Haunted Mansion and he, he, they went through the whole pre-show and he, he chickened out. So we got him through that this time. Redeem, redemption. Redemption. He's like, I can see how this would have been unnerving. And I stand by the fact that I did the chicken exit as a child. Or when we took my youngest son, he was six years old. My wife had him all hyped up walking down Main Street about Haunted Mansion. He was shaking on the way in, but... He didn't do the chicken exit, but on the way out, he was like, that was awesome. Oh, good. Good. He really liked Jungle Cruise, too, now that I think about it. I was trying to think of things from Magic Kingdom before we were starting to get a little overheated there. He really liked the Jungle Cruise a lot. I was just looking at the C's. Both got, both of you, the worst rating of the entire trip looks like. I don't know. Do you have any other ones? No, no. Even Obibs, I think, averages a little bit better than that. But yeah, the seas did not fare very well. Why? It's an, one of the biggest aquariums, isn't it, in the world? 
It just, it, I think Pat's take on it was that it seems like they put the money into the cool, cool clamshells and then the effects once you got into the, because he thought the aquarium part was like cool when we were walking out through there, but just the screens and the fishies. And I learned that he just hates Finding Nemo as an IP. I didn't, I, I didn't learn this until we went to the Finding Nemo show at Animal Kingdom on day, day two. And because I knew that he didn't really love the Lion King, he likes the Lion King, but he's like, this is Hamlet, but for children. Yeah, that's fine though. It doesn't, that doesn't have to be a derogatory thing, Patrick. And I, he's like, oh no, I really liked Lion King. And I was met on Nemo. I was like, really? Why? And he's like, I just don't like finding Nemo as a story. Oh, okay. <laughs> Another lesson so, learned. Yeah, lesson learned. He's like, it was the AC it was cold. We were like, he's like, that was nice. It was well done. He's like, I just didn't really like it because I don't really care for, as he calls Nemo, water caillou. Total time with Crush couldn't even redeem him. We didn't even. I, I he was out Gave on the up. completely. He yeah. We, we we lost him entirely. Yeah, we completely lost him at that point where he was like, I'm not going in there. He's he was like, Where's the exit? Where we can go there instead? I couldn't really get him there for like nighttime Epcot vibes where I couldn't convince him to stay any longer because that was the one day that we did leave and then re-enter a park because we went to Beaches and Cream and then we did another stroll around World Showcase that evening but i was like trying to get him because i'm like oh you have to see spaceship earth at night he didn't make it oh really Sad. before no, you know, he, before it no, lit up yeah no he i couldn't convince him i was like why don't we just take another like a little more extended resort break like can you just wander a little bit around the yacht and beach club or i don't know go to coronado because so he doesn't really he remembers he stayed at coronado one of the trips he did it as a kid and he thinks he's pretty sure we, we pretty much nailed it down at the yacht club but i was trying to like spark memories i was like do you know this carpet patrick he's like, maybe i don't know <laughs> he's like, but he's like, i do remember when we went through the international gateway to enter and exit and when we went to and from beaches he's like, this i remember he's like the boat like the dock at the yacht club this i remember okay so you probably did stay here that, that would be a good guess because nobody really knows that area unless they stayed over there where the most part, yeah, the most part you don't go to the, because usually it's faster to walk at that point to a cot. So yeah. you usually just take, yeah, take the boat quite as much. So it depends on the day. But yeah, that was, I couldn't get, I couldn't convince him. But he even really liked the, the Celebration Gardens, World Celebration. And he enjoyed like that. I'm like, oh yeah, this ambiance here. I'm like the music, the background music. I love the background music. There, a funny story of working remote one day in January where my boss knew I was at Disney because he knew I was there for the marathon. This is sidetrack, but Pluto came up during my team's call and into my, into, into the camera. My boss thought it was the funniest thing on earth. And then I was there because I, I, I was working and the cast member came back later and they're like, I didn't get you in trouble, right? Oh no, if it were an important call, I wouldn't be in a park right now. <laughs> it was just my Friday stand up with my boss and my teammate. And he was like, Find Goofy next. <laughs> that's fantastic. But yeah, that's a, obviously a very strong start to my experience in the World Celebration Gardens. But also there's lots of outlets there. There's lots of, I obviously haven't been in the new area that just opened a couple in the beginning of, or like mid beginning of June ish, speaking from the future. But yeah, right. I haven't been there yet, but I really like the garden areas, lots of outlets. Other people working from home. Every time I've gone back there, there's other people working. So it makes me feel like my extra pat down from security was worth it. And it's, I'm not weird for doing it. But Where is that? You're speaking about, wait, this is an Epcot you, there's a place you can actually plug in and work. Like yeah, laptop? really it's outside. It is outside. So uh, your mileage uh, may vary if it's a million degrees out, but really just the new, like the cell of the gardens that opened in December. So near where, where Walt's, Walt's yes, statue, not too far from the Walt statue, gotcha. but there's somewhere, there's just some outlets, there's some USB ports, there's just regular chargers. I keep a bat when I'm working remotely, especially I keep a battery pack as well, an anchor to keep that charged. But yeah, it's a really like nice area. There's actually a good amount of space. Um, I think I've gone through your notes. Did I miss anything like a good story or pixie dust moment? She's laughing. Well, yeah. So I mentioned how Patrick did some research and knew enough to know there was a barrel roll in Flight of Passage. So there is one thing he didn't do research on, and that's called the Tower of Terror. Oh, did you? Oh, I'm looking at the rating, so I don't want to give it away. He thought 
the Tower of Terror was essentially like haunted mansion, but you went to like slowly to each level of the of of the hotel. Where did he get an idea like that? I think he's seen a ride through and he probably saw in California prior to them switching to Mission Breakout where I guess I can see where you go up and you pause a little bit, but you're still, and I told him, I was like, oh, this ride's kind of, it's more bouncy than drappy. And we're sitting outside Rock and Roller Coaster where it's still close, but we were sitting out there just in the shade. We were sunscreening uh, up, taking a little water break. And I was like, and we hear screams obviously coming from the Tower of Terror. I'm like, LOL, are you ready for that to be you? And I guess that didn't register with him. Didn't catch it, huh? He didn't catch it. He was just like, and as the, the tower is going forward into the drop shaft or whatever. And I was like, so I don't know if it's going to go up or down first, but you can grab my hand if you need to. And uh, he's like, okay. And then I think That's we best. dropped, we dropped first. And immediately he grabs onto me. The picture is hysterical because he's. It's almost an Auntie uh, Judy pose. He's got like, cause he bought a safari hat at Animal Kingdom because he had a bucket hat, but he wanted a safari hat and he's got the safari hat and his face is like, and he was like, so that's a ride. I was like, yeah, like you did well for it though. He's I didn't realize it would be all droppy like that. I thought I was going through the, the, the haunted hotel. Oh my goodness. Did I get a laugh out of that? <laughs> Sounds like the first time I went with Margita on that. <laughs> she knew what was going to happen, but I've never seen a face so white and terrorized <laughs> when we got and laughing at the same time. Oh, it was so funny. It was like, I told, like, did, what did you think the screams were? He goes, I thought people were just, I don't know, having fun. They were, but also what? Terrified. <laughs> Oh man, that was so funny though. I got a good cackle out of that. Maybe, maybe the title of the ride didn't really register either. Tower of Terror. <laughs> that is so hysterical. Yeah. It was hysterically funny. You got the picture? You have to send me that. Oh, I got the picture. Because here's me smiling, waving as I know where the drop is. And just, it was so funny. He's got his, that was the day he had a lime green polo on. So it was his Kermit green too. Very funny, Eric'ly funny. Good um, one, Natalie. It was. I you thought could... he knew because I was surprised he wanted to do it. I'm like, you're sure you wanted? Before I booked the lightning lane, I'm like, you sure you want to do that? And he's like, oh, why not? I learned why not, or I I learned well, that I probably should have asked a more probing question. Well, funny enough, this is the ranking that probably has the most disparity between the two of you. You're nine point five, and he's five point five. Now, is the nine point five because it's such an awesome ride? Or was it just because it was just so hysterical? No, oh, it was enhanced, especially. It was enhanced by learning that he had no idea that what was uh, coming. I him. love it. Uh, that that would get my rating. Yeah, definitely enhanced by that because it was so funny that he didn't know. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other. Oh, I didn't bring up. So I went back for Fantasmic Dining that, that night. And I actually, and I was running late because I did myself a little strolly stroll around Epcot World Showcase alone. I got a couple great, fantastic drinks along the way. They had a American flag margarita in Mexico. I think it was lime, raspberry, and then they put some blue curacao to make the blue because it was Memorial Day. And then there was this thing at Norway called troll creme. I think it was a flower and garden specific because that was the last weekend of that, but it was fantastic. It was like raspberry, rum, I don't know. I It was frozen. Frozen. That's good. It was fantastic. I love that. So I had myself a little drinky drink around the world. Always a tipsy ducks and love is required consumption for me. That being my marathon drink of choice by mile 25. I'm just having myself a good old time. <laughs> and so I get back for my showing of Fantasmic a little later than I should at 840 for a nine o'clock show. And because I was a party of one, I got, I was seated in the very front row. Oh, wow. How come they just, they just like had for one? Bring you down there. Yep. The cast members are, do you mind getting what? I'm like, no, not at all. I will yeah. sacrifice my life for Phantasmic. I love Phantasmic. You're probably uh, already wet. It was a hot day. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, get, get wet a little bit. Yeah. That and, bad though, is it? You get really sweaty. It's more misty right. than anything, but it was great because usually 
I'm a little bit, I end up a little bit more on the right hand side. So like there's different things where I was like center, but like a little bit like center left. So I guess that, and then the last time I also viewed it, I was way more on the left words. I used to see things because I'm used to, okay, the boat comes right by me and like, the characters are still coming out where it was as they're starting to do their little dance around toward the end and just the different things you notice. And I love Fantasmic. I love Fantasmic. I've been wanting to ask, I've been asking this question and I don't know that I've got a, an answer that I've been a fan of, but since you love Fantasmic, the old one, can you compare the old one to the new one? New one, a hundred times better. I'm going to give a very hot take. Yeah. Disneyland used to be the better Fantasmic. Oh, I think oh. Walt Disney World is the better one now. Oh, good answer. I agree. I love the additions. Right. And when I was out of Disneyland in January for the races, it was down still because, oops. Uh, but I think that Walt Disney World has the better of the two Fantasmics now. All right. Yeah. I, and it, that's not that the other one was bad at all. We all loved it. That's just a great example. And we've been talking about the nighttime shows because <laughs> everyone loves the classics. But this one, yeah, just great enhancements. The music is just really fantastic. They really put in the tender love and care. They kept the good stuff. Oh, yeah. And I love oh, when Moana puts her puts the, the heart of Tafiti in the air. Just the, everyone goes wild. I think it's my favorite show now. Yeah. Awesome. Natalie, did we get everything? I'm going to have one more question for you. Ooh, I am scrolling my little list to see if there was anything that we missed. No, I don't think so. Oh, it was funny because Patrick had only been on the California version of Soren because so it was that's what it was back in the day and he's like oh i really i like this whole updated thing this is really cool where i feel like a lot of when california was back this fall i was like yes because <laughs> i was actually in california because i did coast to coast for marathon weekend and the disneyland weekend where when i was in florida like the weekend before it was california soaring when i went to california it was soaring around the world so that was funny but, and I, I didn't bother going on it when I was in California, <laughs> but I, it's funny because he was like, oh, that was really cool. He's like, everyone was, was like, yeah, was there a little, because we weren't like first, we weren't like B1. So we were, I think C1. So we didn't have feet in our face, but I guess he thought, oh, that was another funny patism where he thought that it uh, only went five feet above the ground and we're buckled in and he's like, no. <laughs> and he was like, Wow, he's like, we're high up there. I'm like, yeah, we are high up. <laughs> but that was another fun. It just it was really fun to like see things through his eyes and like also the what do you remember from his childhood trip? He had I guess he had never done pirates when he was a kid, and he really liked pirates. He liked it a lot. But it was funny just the what do you remember from from your trip as a kid and just sparking memories and like certain things that are always there and whatnot. But then certain things that like Hollywood Studios is same but different in a lot of ways. He still thought that for all he knew and up until May 20th of 2024, the hat was still there. So that really leads into the final review. Look back at this trip. Let's, can you think of what Pat's response was and what memory is he going to take away from this trip you think was as his favorite? I think some of the things that were almost confirmation bias for him of because he was really looking forward to Indiana Jones. He loved Indiana Jones. What surprised him though, I know, was that he was like, wow, you always think you're like, you always think that the, the strongest one is going to be like the scene where there's the boulder and like, the thing that's like the opening scene of Raiders of the Lost Ark. In retrospect, that's the weakest one. He's like, the other effects are so cool that I almost forgot. I didn't forget about it because it's Indiana Jones, but I thought that was like, the, the he was like, he's like, they were all awesome. But like, he's like, the Cairo scene was awesome. The other, he's like, oh, this was all just so cool. So I think certain things of just, uh, were like that where he could confirm that, like, yeah, this is what I wanted to do and whatnot. I think also he was really impressed with all the transit at Disney. This is so dorky, but in a lot of ways it's good, but it's like, walk, it's like public transit of, he's like the ease of the monorail, right? Like he came to meet me at California Grill. I did not go get him from Shades because you have to go to the TTC, t go through security at the TCC, get on the monorail to, he met me at Magic Kingdom, outside Magic Kingdom. And he like, he was like, oh, this is all so easy. He's like, and I feel safe here. 
And I feel he's like, I'm starting to get like the moments where I could see like the cogs turning in a lot of ways. Oh, I'm starting to get it. Like, of like why you come here a lot and like why you're comfortable coming here alone. I do a decent amount of solo ventures. But he's like, why are you like, he's like, I understand why you meet people at three o'clock in the parking lot of Epcot in the dark at three in the morning. Why you, that doesn't feel weird because it's Disney, right? It's like a run Disney race. But I think him just starting to just get it. And I think that he was like, I know that Hollywood Studios and Epcot were the highlights for him for sure. But he was super pleasantly surprised by Animal Kingdom. Awesome. Got him. <laughs> We've got hope for the future. Oh, we do. I love that. Look at his coaster tolerance up because I really want him to do Guardians. I really, I, I at least want him to go through the pre-show because I think he'd enjoy the story of it. But, and then he could take chicken next to that after that. I, t- I tried to convince him to do that. I was like, let's just go go through the pre-show with me. And then if you don't want to get on the coaster, then you can take chicken exit out. I was like, it's in the AC. It's in the shade. We can do that. And he's like, eh. The great thing about it is, take it from me, you don't have to do all of the intense rides to enjoy Disney World. Oh, for sure. Or do them once and see if you can make it through. Yeah, after Big Thunder, um, because we got Tron, I got a Tron boarding group. I didn't even, I because then I and then I think it was when we were at Jock Lindsay's or we were heading to Jock Lindsay's, so I didn't even bother uh, doing it. But uh, I knew that there was no way Tron was going to happen for him after he was because we got row fifteen on Big Thunder. Okay. So we, I knew that was not that that wasn't happening. My big question is: Will he ride Tower of Terror ever again? Now that you've ruined him possibly oh man that's the million dollar question i think he i think it would probably be a sparing thing and by (laughs) sparing i'm gonna use the one more ride on a ride like that in california for mission breakout because he'll enjoy the guardians of it all okay he's a fan of guardians Yeah. yeah he does yeah he i think he would really like that he would at least like the story behind it. So I, I feel like I'm probably, it's kind of Travis Dietrich says he, you get one ride on small world with him. And I wanted to use mine in California, but it was closed because they were taking down the overland for when we were both there for the race where I think I could get one more, one more tower esque ride out of him. And it's not, I'm going to wait till we can get to California. Sounds good. All right. Then for you, this was your mini moon. What's your favorite memory from this trip, Natalie? Oh man, I think it was, there's so many good ones. Um, There's the funny, there's just like, whenever something like surprised me about his ranking or like his like, cause we didn't rank until the flight home, but it was just things that like surprised me and they were always good surprises. Like Beauty and the Beast. Okay, Indiana Jones was the, his favorite show cause it's Indian of the subject matter. But he was like, Beauty and the Beast is the best show we've seen. He was like, he, and he saw that as a kid. So he was like, almost like jaw on the floor. He was like, that was so good. He's like, and they do that how many times a day? (laughs) Like Lion King as well. Like how he was like, that was so good. That was so good. Just like the look on his face, like just at certain things, it was like the wonder of a child, even though it's my spouse who's my age. So I think it was a lot of just that or like, oh, like when we come back type of just, and I knew at first, like some of it was to placate me into not running him into the ground. In the middle. Oh no, I didn't know that might be a possibility. Just certain things where it was just, I was like, oh no, let's like, let's go back. And he's like, we can catch this when we come back. I'm like, okay. Type of, I think, I don't know, just because I think I just have like, a certain just stamina to do that. I joke all, I joked really a lot through my wedding weekend into the trip that I'm so glad I'd done the dopey challenge because I felt like that was the only way for me to have the stamina to do wedding on little or like rehearsal into wedding on little sleep, wedding into, you know, visiting with your family that came in into honeymoon on little sleep. We're like dope. That's how they're like, and then running around the theme parks. Like I have the dopey stamina to get me through that. Isn't that the truth? I remember I did a lot of, I was an athlete in high school through college. And my wedding was the most exhausting thing I've ever been through. I I can remember that evening, just like laying down going, I can't move. Like I'm exhausted. Like, so yeah, that's good thing. You're, you did all your marathons. You were, you trained well for your wedding. Yeah. And I was like a joke, but half my group is like runner or runner interested. I got my bridesmaids and they're like, no, this makes sense. Like, 
like how you do something like close down Magic Kingdom after the full, just insane things like that. Or honestly, even like the coast to coast this year where I didn't go home in between my trip, my marathon weekend in Disneyland, I went directly from Orlando to Disneyland and which was super dope. It was so cool. That's another conversation though. <laughs> but like the stamina of, I was so tired because <laughs> I worked too that whole time where I'm still at the weekends, but I was working remotely. And so it wasn't even like my days I could just like completely like cash out. No, I was up at six o'clock for an 8.30 call like on California time. A couple of days after running, having just run a marathon, right? And done like having, having had experiences like that where I can function on little sleep, but yeah, it's not great, but like, and still have the stamina to keep going and doing the things and being present and whatnot. I, that's how I'm going to write off coast to coast. It was just a wedding expense. That was fine. Goofy to Dumbo. I'm so glad I got a chance to talk to you about your mini moon, Natalie. This is so fun. I love having you on the show. And con again, congratulations on Thank the you. wedding and the house and starting off your marriage life in a great way. And I hope you do have many more oh, yes. trips to enjoy together now. Oh, yes. Maybe we'll get Pat here sometime, I too. Love it. Yeah, anytime. Definitely stay in touch, Natalie. Will do. And I know I'll see you running around the parks one of these days. Yeah. It's coming. Uh, <laughs> next one's coming. Is that your next trip you got planned is the January marathon? So I'm doing wine and dine first. Okay. So I'll be there in November. And then I am all in on Dobie after swearing last year that I was going to do the marathon alone this year up next year. And then here we are. Are you connecting with the geeks on these two trips? Oh, yeah. yeah. There's some plans. Oh, yeah. With a bunch of people to, to do wine dining now. And I know Samantha's told me she's doing the dopey. Yes. I believe I may have had like a little of the doing of talking her into that. All right. She deserves it. She's talked enough people into things herself. I am enabler number one. If you have been convinced to run a marathon by Natalie Boyle O'Malley, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Watch out for Natalie. She I'm going to tell you. you that it's a good idea. And I'm going to tell you that if you can run a half, you can probably train for a full. It's only that many more miles. I have a shtick. I've, I've warned you all. Don't come complain to me. Watch out for Natalie. My wedding photographer says she would never do, like she told herself she'd never do a full. And now she's like, I don't think I'd be in on Dopey, but I think Goofy. She's a run Disney person as well, where she's like, I think I could do Goofy. I think I could. She's not the one where you wake up four days before two days. I can do that. Yes, you can, Joy. I'll be there. Good for you. Don't worry. You're a lot of fun, Natalie. Thanks so much for coming on. Of course. Thanks for having me. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Boy, I've been busy booking new trip reports for the podcast. I've got like five I'm lining up right now. Really excited to talk to some of you guys that are coming back from trips. I got some that went to Disneyland Paris, and we got someone who did destinations by Disney in Morocco and yeah, lots of other fun trips to Disney world. Can't wait to get those recorded and out to you geeks in the Facebook group. There's lots of fun questions happening. Christy Houston's asking about shorts from the ladies. Of course I recommended USA shorts. That's the perfect pair of shorts. As far as I'm concerned, if you, if you know, you know, from the joke from a G3 a few years ago when the geeks punked me and all were USA shorts like my swimming trunks. Jennifer wants to know about the Jollywood Knights. And, you know, I can see Bill Carmichael and Christy also posting their comments on Jollywood Knights that's coming up in the Christmas time. Lindsay Velasina wondering about transfers between resorts. Yeah, lots of great comments helping her with that. Cousin Heather has been posting all kinds of pictures from Disneyland Paris. She had a great trip with her kids, and I can't wait to talk to her about that trip. And my daughter Lindsay and I were in New York City this weekend, a Wizard of Oz weekend. We saw The Wiz, and then we also saw Wicked for the first time. I really enjoyed both those shows. Just got back from a weekend, one night stay in New York City. Thank you, everyone, for booking with the Travel and Tears. Margie and Judy always want me to remind you that you can book your own trips and even transfer those. It's really easy to do, but they love working and talking with you guys every single day and week. 
Travelintierras at gmail.com is their email. Reach out to them. If you like to book a trip, thank you for all my Patreon supporters. I've got a recording I did this week with Susan Cox, Meet a Geek series. Susan and I got on a call, and I'll be putting that out this coming week. Or you can listen to all the other episodes, the bonus podcast, the inner circle that I've been putting out over my last few trips. Check that out if you're a Patreon supporter. One of them I put out there, if you go to patreon.com slash geekinonwdw, it was the interview with Wendy Fox I put out for anyone to listen to. So if you want to get an idea of those Meet a Geek series, you can listen to one that Wendy Fox interviewed with me. Thank you again for all my Patreon supporters. I'm replaying intros from a year ago, something I do when I don't have an intro. So if you'd like to record an intro for me, I'd really appreciate it. They're really fun to do. Easy record on your phone. Send them to me as a video, audio. It doesn't matter. I can get the audio out of it. And all you got to do is tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me who you are. And a fun Disney World fact or two about yourself. You can go geeking on Walt Disney World with Curtis and the whole geeking family. Email them to me at kurt.stone at geekinonww.com. And we do all of this because we're committed to helping you enjoy your Disney World vacations. I love it when you reach out to me and say, hey, I got lots of great tips from the podcast. So thanks for your support of the podcast. Just reach out to us if you want to do a trip report. Book a trip or review your plans for trips. My email is kurt.stone at geekinonww.com. Thanks for going geeking on Walt Disney World with us. We really appreciate you listening and geeking with us every single day. We love you, geeks. Keep on taking care of each other and have a magical day. And I hope all your dreams come true. Hope you had a great July 4th weekend, because I know I did too. Talk to you later, geeks. Geeks.